Well, many quilters say that 50% of the pleasure they derive from quilting is actually sewing and making quilts. The other 50% is the friendships they make because quilting friends are fantastic friends. On today's show, we feature a project that is a great excuse to get all your quilting buddies together and share your fabric stash. On today's program, you will learn how to make half square triangles using triangle papers, how to play with patchwork on a design wall, and how our staff members use their friendship triangles to make a whole bunch of beautiful quilts. Funding for Fonz and Porter's love of quilting is provided by... For over 40 years, Babylock has been dedicated to the love of sewing by creating machines for sewing, embroidery, quilting, and serging. Babylock, for the love of sewing. Koala Studios delivers sewing furniture custom built in America. American Professional Quilting Systems, APQS, offers a full line of hand-guided quilting machines made in America's heartland for America's artisans. The Oliso ProZone Smart Iron, featuring the auto lift, engineered for the professional quilter and sewing enthusiast. And over fabrics, makers of a variety of fabrics available at independent quilt shops and fabric stores. Sulky, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, and books. Sulky, express yourself. OmniGrid, providing quilters with specialty rulers and accessories for over 25 years. Quilters Club of America, offering patterns and videos to the passionate quilter. Hi, I'm Mary Ann Fonz, and you're watching the 1700 series of Fonz and Porter's Love of Quilting. And I'm Mary Fonz, Mary Ann's daughter, and it has been so much fun taping this series with you, Mom. Thanks for having me back. We've had a blast. Yeah. We've got a great quilt in the, on the wall today. It's uh, full of beautiful, beautiful triangles made by Adita Sitar, who's a terrific quilter, and she loves triangles. She makes so many quilts. They all have half square triangles in them, and she does terrific things with them. She combines all kinds of fabrics. She's got batiks in there, some dusty rose prints, and everything goes goes together when she does it. I don't know how she does it. She's magic. She makes it work wonderfully. And this quilt has all those little half square triangles, but then a large square, you know, in the middle of the block. So she combines the half square triangles in all kinds of ways to make really interesting quilts. Mm -hmm. And we have on the set today uh, her book that's called Friendship Triangles. And in that book, she's sort of challenging quilters to get together with their friends and produce oodles and oodles of triangles and then trade them and make them into wonderful quilts. A triangle swap, kind of like your cutting bee idea that I I know you yes. talked about on the show before where you mm -hmm. get together and trade pieces and, and uh, sort of double or even triple, quadruple your, your scraps right. and, your, and your pieces by sharing them with your friends. It's like a cookie swap that you might do where, you know, however many cookies you bring, you get to take different cookies. So it's the same concept because you get a whole variety. Exactly. So the way, uh, the way Adita uh, teaches making these triangles really uh, benefits these kind of swaps because... Right. As we all know, sometimes not everybody has the same concept of a quarter inch seam. Right. I mean, everyone has different ways of doing things, and you think a quarter inch seam is always a quarter inch seam, but mm -hmm. actually some, some people might sew a little bit scant mm -hmm. or a little bit over, and, and when you start swapping, that can really cause a problem. So yes. this, this method is right. great for sharing because you're always going to get the exact size. Everyone is always very uniform. Right. And you're not going to hurt anybody's feelings right. or anything. So her system is a uh, paper system, and I, I've seen these kind of triangle papers before. Hers are designed for pieces of fabric 6 by 21 inches. So we've got two fabrics here. We want to put the light on top, and you'll see in a minute why. So we've paired the two fabrics together. Then you just put on the paper, and you just throw a few pins in. Mm -hmm. You center the paper, throw a few pins in away from the stitching. And we're not going to sew the whole thing. We're just going to kind of get started. But just so you know how this works, um, you ha the papers show you where to enter the stitching. There's an arrow. And as you follow around, you'll follow the path, and you'll go out. Did I start here? Yeah. You go out on the other corner. Mm -hmm. Then there's another arrow, and you follow that around, and you'll come out on the opposite corner. And then all the stitching is done. Right. So did I give you enough pins? Maybe you need one more one where you're going to start. Okay. I'll just sew mm -hmm. one to kind of show how yeah. it goes. And it's so easy because, you know, you just have your needle in the center position and you stitch on those dashed lines. Yep. You got on the dashed yeah, line. Yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. And then you don't want to sew past it. You want to end when the lines end. Right. And pivot around. Yeah, so that's how much you should do is sew, t sew till you have to yep. turn. And you can hopefully put your machine in the needle down position so it, mm -hmm. when you stop sewing, it will keep mm -hmm. your needle down and you can pivot easily right. that way. 
And as long as everybody can sew, as long as they can color on the lines, right. they will have perfect results. Right. Oh, and this paper, we like, you know, like we always do on our shows, the, the special products and tools and things we use on the show, we will um, put up on the website, on the TV section of uh, Fonz and Porter's Love of right. Quilting. So I'm just mm -hmm. got my needle down, pivoting. Oh, I could probably go one more stitch. Okay. I'll do one more to get myself really... Yeah. yeah, that's I love pivoting on the needle because you know you can go just you yep. can just be really precise. And then I just the keep, other way. keep following mm -hmm. the right. dotted lines. Right. Yep. So here we have one that's all sewn. And as usual, we use red thread so you can see the work. And we've stitched this very nicely. And then it's just a matter of cutting it apart. Mm -hmm. And what I do and I suppose this is just common sense, anybody would, is, you know, this is longer than my ruler. Right. So I do the horizontal cuts first, and I think I'll just come down here and okay. go that way. Um, and, you you know, you want to be careful. You want to cut on the line. Yep. And one thing that's important to mention, really important to mention, is that when you are cutting your pieces apart, leave the paper on before when you trade mm -hmm. when you trade these pieces it's it's uh it's a great idea to leave the paper on because then uh things stay together better mm -hmm. uh you can um you ha you're going to be handling them a lot right so. you can make sure they don't fray and get all stretched out it keeps them it keeps them nice uh and they're kind of i don't know with the, with the paper on it almost feels like they are little cookies yeah or they, they really are it's like just, little packages yeah and i'm just going to cut this part and uh, they're oh, gift wrap they're gift wrap <laughs> they are and you know this concept every when when adita's quilt and her book came in the, there's so many quilters on our staff at Fonson Porter that they um, got excited about it and they decided to to do it. Yep. And not only did they decide to do it among, I kind of missed the line there. I That's didn't okay. do my best work. We won't trade that one. But um, so what they did, there's another publisher in the Des Moines area, Landauer Books, and they have a bunch of quilters on their staff, mm -hmm. and we're we're buddies with them. And so we decided that, that we would make triangles and challenge them and exchange them and then see what resulted. And we're going to have kind of a quilt show in a little bit to show you the results. They had over 9,000 right. triangles among them all to yep. trade and swap. Mm -hmm. And there's a quilt show. Yeah, we're going to yeah. show all the quilts they made. And they did kind of a soup to nuts idea in terms of uh, the fabrics. But you could do, um, let me go press this, yeah. but you could do, you know, a theme like reproductions or right. batiks. You could do Civil War era fabrics. You could do batiks. You could pick your favorite designer and do a sort of a story story, a color story mm -hmm. from your favorite designer, right. uh, and, and just see what you get. Right. So the reason we put the paper on the light fabric is so when we press, mm -hmm. we can then set the seam on the dark side and open it, and then your seam is going to the dark fabric, which is kind of the rule of thumb. And, you know, before we take off the paper, too, it's it's not necessary, but you might want to shorten your stitch length, too, when you sew the paper mm -hmm. to, to the paper. Uh, the, the smaller your stitches are, the easier it is to tear right. off. You know, it's, it's But the worse it is to rip something out if you have to, so, true. you know, you, you have decide. to wait it. You decide. <laughs> okay, then, as you can see on this, because of where Mary would pivot around in sewing this, there's little stitches on the little bunny ears of the, of the triangle square. So it's kind of a, a... I always like to cut them off anyway, but it's a double benefit here because it... Um, break some of that stitching and makes the papers easier to tear off. Right. And another little tip is before you tear it, if you just kind of fold it back. Crease it. Just like you, any perforation. And then I'm just going to, you want to be careful. And in a way, I think it's good that you leave the papers on when you trade for another reason is like you can be more gentle maybe than yep. not everybody, you know, mm -hmm. then you can tear your papers off with your own amount of force. Exactly. So that's how it works. And you may, and every time, let's see, I don't, didn't notice how many you get per, does it say how many you get? Two, four, six, eight times four, and 24, this, right? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, yeah, you, so. You, they come in packages and you make lots and lots. And so here, here's what they look like when you trade. Yeah, eight times four is 24, right? Yeah. No, it's 32. 32. <laughs> that math, was a test. Yeah. The fly, We're going to so. hear, I know there's a lot of teachers, so we'll hear from the math teachers yeah, out there. Yeah. But, you know, I use a calculator. I measure yeah. once or twice, and then I still sometimes make a mistake. So that's what they look like when you trade. And let's just shove those out of the way, Mary. That's great. Look at all yeah, that. all that. And I think they just put them in a bag. You know, you don't get to look. Nope. At what, no, yeah. that's, that's mm -hmm. cheating. Yeah. <laughs> and so you get all these wonderful triangles. And Very we, we've got Joe Morton reproductions here today, which are my favorite kind of fabric. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. So they're all kind kinds of blocks you can make with these half square triangles by combining them with some two inch finished squares, mm -hmm. maybe some four inch finished triangles. Mm -hmm. And you know, the quilt books are just full of designs like this. And, and we discovered a lot of them with the cutting bee process that we did yep. was the same dimensions, two inch finished and four inch finished. Mm -hmm. So we've got a couple of blocks on our design wall already. Lovely. And we're gonna go over and build a couple more. Cool. 
And you know, these blocks have names, and we're not we're not getting interest into the names uh, today, but they are wonderful, wonderful designs. Mm -hmm. So mine has half square triangles that are the two inch finished, and then some big triangles. And you could make a whole quilt. And we have we have some quilts today to show where you just you only used your half square right. triangles. You didn't right. even you know you don't even need to mess around with any other size uh, or ha size of a half square triangle or any other piece at all. But the more you do, it's funny the, the, the I, more I, designs you can get. I practice your, the block you're doing <laughs> at a time. Oh really? Yeah, well, but I got, you got your little I got, guide. I got my guide. I love, I just love these fabrics. They're my all time favorite. And we're putting them up on a portable design wall that's a, 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 a wall that I kind of came up with. It's a, got a, a, a vinyl back, backing on the back side, and then it's got this fuzzy front side, and um, your fabric stick to you it. Don't you don't need, have to pin yeah, you at don't need all. Yeah, pins at all. Yeah. It's awesome. There are grommets in the top that you can use those little removable hooks to put on your wall. And uh, there's even a grid that shows through that kind of helps you keep those uh, charm quilts color wash quilts going straight, it's wonderful. So, you know, mine has some four inch finished, uh, these will be four inch finished half square triangles and all the little guys. This one has squares at the corners and a four inch finished square in the middle, plus the triangles. That's, this one is squares and triangles. Mm -hmm. And this uh, this one's just sort of a sawtooth, almost a sawtooth border, sort of with those yeah. form, those, those yeah. half square triangles looking like that. I love all of these. They're wonderful. I've already planned to take all this stuff home with me. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, you know, that just gives you a little bit of an idea of the kind of things you can do. And now, for the rest of the show, we're going to have kind of a trunk show because the Landauer Books folks finished a lot of quilts, the Fonson Porter staff finished a lot of quilts, and they made all kinds of neat things. Let's take a look. Okay. One of the most spectacular ones we've got with us is Diane Tomlinson's Tree of Life. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And this is actually, Diane um, adapted one of Adita's patterns. Mm -hmm. I think in Adita's uh, pattern, she had the little vines or the, the branches uh, mm -hmm. on the outside, but Diane, Diane kind of swapped it around, so she had the, the, the branches on the inside, and the, and the Tree of Life uh, goes throughout the whole quilt. It's and beautiful. It's really just beautiful. And you know, when you look at this, and you see all those Hasker triangles, like getting them in an exchange, Gets you, gets your, takes your scrap quilt to a higher level because you get so much variety that if even if you put in a lot of fabrics at home, you wouldn't have that many. Scrap quilts are actually sometimes deceptively difficult because you have to have a lot of fabrics to really make it shine. Right, and you can't really get a block made till you have that whole variety. Right, but you so. don't just have to make a quilt with these little half square triangles. You can do other things too, and I believe these are Anne's. Uh, these are Anne's. Yeah, right? if you don't want to make something big, something that you might don't think you have the time, you so can. Anne made small right. projects. Yes. Yeah. This book cover is pretty amazing. Yeah, we she, got the book turned the right way. I think so. Nope. Oh, no. Nope. Right for us. Wrong <laughs> yeah. for them. <laughs> yeah. So she did, she did a book cover and just uh, it's really gorgeous neat. with batiks. She used a lot of batiks. And she's got some shirting, yeah. mm -hmm. shirting fabrics in there, too. She also made a little bag. It was, like I say, soup to nuts. There's batiks. There's, you know, old-fashioned prints. There's all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. She likes to make bags. Ann Welker is a real, she, she's a good sewer, not just a quilter and patchwork. Mm -hmm. She does all kinds of things. So this Anne is a great that. little project bag for a small, yes. a small quilt project. Take it to the grocery store too. Absolutely. Okay. And so another quilt we have with us today, also by Ann Welker. She 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 actually could have made a, a whole quilt. Yeah. <laughs> so this wall quilt, I love this because yeah. it's nothing but those triangles, those half square triangles made with the triangle papers mm -hmm. and beautiful batik borders. Gorgeous. Okay. So let's show some more. Mm -hmm. I think these are more. <laughs> this, this is, is the, this is the Ann Welker this show. This is the joke. Yeah, <laughs> Ann made uh, this uh, this little wall quilt uh, and two other ones. Yeah. So the, and let's talk. This one is again just the triangle. She didn't add any other size pieces, any squares, mm -hmm. uh, just the triangles. It just kind of goes to show if you get enough people into the swap, you can have a lot of little projects or a big project yes. too. But mm -hmm. this is this all came from the same swap, right? Right. right. And you're going to get what you're going to you're going to have to make as many triangles as you get. Right. But the the key thing is you get an incredible variety that right. you would not have otherwise. Exactly. Because everybody's stash is different. Mm -hmm. So this one involves um, half square triangles, two inch finished squares, and four inch finished squares right. with batik. She likes the batiks. Mm -hmm. This is neat. This is almost like a little basket mm -hmm. uh, patchwork. And so she threw some, she's get, you know, she's kind of feeling her oats now, I guess. She's mm -hmm. putting some um, rectangles in there and she's setting it in a zigzag setting. And you know, here's another point to make about these quilts is the, the half square triangles have all kinds of variety. Mm -hmm. But when you pick a setting fabric or a border fabric, it's a blue quilt. Right. So that fabric that you set it with that has, you know, 
really the um, the flavor of your quilt. Right. You have a lot of control when you've got a scrap quilt like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. To get your message in your uh, border fabrics. This one is by uh, Afonso and Porter staff person, uh, Tony Jacobson. And I think this is gorgeous. He did a wonderful job. And this this has a kind of a funny name. Oh, the a Perkioma Nine Patch, which we've talked about before. Yeah. I, um, so, which I, I have a little different name for it, but anyway, it doesn't matter what the name is. Yep. But this is all triangles. It's all triangles. Yes, it's all triangles. He hasn't used anything else but the, the half square triangles. Um, but he also he chose to do a wide border. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a, a theme with some of the staff quilts. Right. Uh, and I think it's just wonderful, these beautiful batiks. You can right. really show them off. He also, he uh, stitched in the ditch, and the quilting is just all yeah. stitch in the Real ditch plain. quilting. And, and he's got this little skinny, it looks like a quarter inch finish, little yep. framing, gives it a little pop there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, getting we're getting bigger. Our quilts are getting bigger. This one's by Julie Ryan, who's one of the Landauer Books staff, mm -hmm. and she's using all triangles and some light squares. And the way she positioned her blocks, she does get kind of a secondary mm -hmm. design with the yeah. uh, with these white, the little white squares on the corner make bigger squares. Right. But these are actually all just the tiny pieces. Mm -hmm. She didn't do the larger. Right. Uh, she didn't cut larger pieces. It, it actually forms kind of a star that shows up better. You can probably see it better from where you are than we can up close to this. But mm -hmm. uh, absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous. Okay. I'll let you put that okay. one away. This one here. Oh, I love the uh, backing. Let's show the back. Gotta show the backing fabric. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. You know, when you have those large scale prints, a back is a great place to put them because yep. they are so wonderful in their full glory. Exactly. This one is, again, you know, the batiks, it, it, what's so amazing about Adita's uh, system is that she, she encourages, you know, all these different mm -hmm. kinds of fabrics and, and, and they just, when you put them all together in a scrappy quilt, they work. Even if you don't think a batik could go right. with something else. Well, th these are mostly batiks. A lot of them are but, batiks. But there's a, there's, she just has but, such but a nice some, style. You're right, you're right. Not, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but yeah, I was yeah. just, th what I was thinking as I was looking at this quilt, and this is something, you know, some of you out there are newer quilters, some of you have been quilting as long as I have, and if you've been quilting as long as I have, when I started quilting in the mid 70s, it would have been impossible to make a scrap quilt because there just weren't the cottons out there. Right. And when Liz and I, when the fabric company started making all these wonderful fabrics, I think the first true scrap, scrap quilt we made had 60 fabrics and we wow. were just blown away. That's not that many. Well, yeah, no, it's not. And I mean, I'm newer quilters are kind of spoiled because we have so many choices. Right. All, sometimes it's overwhelming how many choices there are and it's hard to even edit it down to what, you know, something that makes sense. But, but it, I uh, think that makes it a little bit harder because there are can. so many choices. We didn't have very many choices. When we made a quilt that had 60 fabrics, we just couldn't believe it happened. So now you have lots of fabrics in your stash, but the point is you have to keep buying them. Yeah. Because if you don't, the fabric companies won't make more. Keep so buying that you gotta fabric. Keep buying the fabric. <laughs> okay, so we, do we uh, call out Sharon? Oh, this is Sharon Hartz. Oh, Sharon this Hartz. This is Sharon Hartz, who's on our staff. And uh, she's got that whole uh, variety of fabrics. There's probably hundreds and hundreds of fabrics in yep. this. And oh, this one's really, this one's especially fun because this is by Jerry Simon, who used to be on our staff, but yeah. now she's on the Landauer, Landauer staff. staff. And what is so adorable, actually what, what Jerry did was, and I'm just guessing from how the quilt looks, is that she took her triangles back home. Mm -hmm. You know, she got all her triangles, but then she put some of her own control into it. Yep. And that's what I think what makes this quilt so adorable. The polka dots. The polka dots <laughs> is that she, and I'm not sure exactly how she did this. She probably just made a four patch. I'd have to analyze this to just she, see how she, she did. Yep, she's got a. Yeah, they're all they're all just the two inch finish. Or, or she may have just put those in the corners of every block because you know quilts like this, you lose the block, you lose the structure. You can't really see just where it is until you kind of take a longer look at it. Right. Yeah, she made sure that the lighter. The lighter triangles were framing her polka dots, yeah. I think. I, I just think it's adorable. It's really, and really she's, cute. She's got a skinny first border like Tony did, but hers is very muted and kind of just, just sort of falls in there. Mm -hmm. And then the beautiful purple batik outer border. So anyway, we have had a lot of fun uh, working with uh, these triangles. And we hope that you're going to get together with your friends, pick a fabric style or just do soup to nuts, uh, get together and uh, sew. Uh, Maybe bring some cookies, too. You could trade those while you're at it. Yeah, you can have a potluck, too. So uh, we hope you'll enjoy this technique and try it yourself. Grab a pencil. Tips and other useful information coming up next. 
We have a lot of tips to share today. And in fact, the first few tips have to do with the friendship quilts that you just saw being made on today's show. Uh, you know, we wanted to talk a little bit more about how quilting, since it began, has always really been a social tradition. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, in America in the 19th and early 20th century, you know, a lot of women were rural. A lot of families lived in a rural situation and women didn't get to see each other. They didn't get to hang out. And so they made a lot of quilts. They made them at home usually, but then they got together for that traditional sort of iconic, you know, mm -hmm. the quilting bee. But um, it's, a, it's a fact that at those gatherings, they were able to catch up on the, the community gossip, mm -hmm. the uh, recipes, kids, marriage, and so forth. So, mm -hmm. you know, quilters getting together today, it's really just a, in a long tradition of friendship and social activity. Mm -hmm. And though a lot of quilt tops end up being long armed so, uh, by other, mm -hmm. by long, professional long armers or people who like to do that, there's, there's fewer sewing bees or quilting right. bees where people are quilting, but uh, they do uh, trade uh, pieces mm -hmm. uh, or get together and just talk or have a girl's night out, have some wine and cheese and mm -hmm. maybe work on their latest patchwork. And you know, some people poo poo uh, the internet, you know, is a way how it can isolate you. It, it can isolate people, but it can also bring together yeah. people who uh, from around the world or from across the country who wouldn't be able to show each other their patchwork uh, if it wasn't for the internet. You can share on blogs. And, you can uh, Skype and work together on a project. Exactly. Yeah. So anyway, a couple more things about the Friendship Triangles quilts. Yeah, when you trade your triangles, you can just put them in a bag like this and a person counts out how many they get to have. There's certainly not, what was it, 9,000? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's just a few in here, but that's an easy way to trade. And then another really good idea is this one, uh, Adita's uh, Triangle Papers. Uh, are packaged like this for, you know, designed for a six inch by 21 inch strip, which would give you a lot of the same fabric combinations. But if you have small pieces of fabric that you want to use up, you can just separate that triangle paper and just put it together. And then if you would be also making your own quilt, you'd have a lot more combinations that mm -hmm. way if you were just doing it on your own. So it's just an idea. It's great. Okay? Uh, and really kind of following in the same vein, moving on to our other tips today, uh, this social uh, social awareness, quilting being a social activity. Uh, this is a tip that comes from Carmen Tesh in Proto, Missouri, and, and many quilters do this. Uh, if she has leftover blocks or orf you know, orphan bro blocks or blocks that she, she just maybe didn't end up using or, or, or changed her mind about how she wanted to make a certain quilt, when she has leftover pieces like this, she donates them to a quilting Aww. group that uses them for charity quilts, uh, or you can even take them to your local local Salvation Army or just your yeah. goodwill and they will make sure they go to a good a good home. Uh, her sewing area also stays a little neater oh. and more organized when she gets rid of things that aren't going to be used. So yeah. that's really smart and uh, kind of Carmen. Somebody can use it. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a neat idea from Barbara Tandy. Um, she said she uses a little flossing brush. I'm going to take it apart. It's really tiny but I know our camera can see it. She says it works better for cleaning the lint out of her machine. Uh, uh, than the one that came with her machine. So mm -hmm. she, she goes through the bog, bobbin case and feed dogs using one of these. Very smart. Very good idea. Um, and this one, this is a tip that uh, comes from Jane Panovich, and I think it is so cool, and I'm going to try it myself, although I think I've already been doing this without realizing it. Jane says uh, before she and her husband plan a road trip, they schedule quilt shop stops along the way, mm -hmm. and at the first quilt shop, they will get a pattern and a little bit of fabric, and then at each subsequent stop, she, they purchase a little oh. bit more fabric and kind of put the project together as they go, and then by the time they get home, they have fun remembering their travels and they put together the quilt that sort of acts as a photo album for their entire trip and I think that Aww. is so neat and it's a really um, it's I don't sweet. know it's a pretty streamlined way to get something done you're just yeah. kind of going from stop to stop he pretty smart a, a really nice guy yeah, he's already yeah. taken too yeah. bad yeah. too bad girls well that's very <laughs> nice I got a nice guy too yeah and so do you yeah. um, this tip is from Karen Medley from Spokane Washington and this is you know where that that thread storage is always you know a challenge and I think I think this actually has a way to snap the thread in but if you want to uh, corral that thread end so that it doesn't get all tangled in your uh, thread drawer, um, Karen suggests that you put a little uh, dot of glue up here on the top of the spool or on the end of the thread mm -hmm. and just lock that up there so it stays put rather than getting snarled. Mm -hmm. okay. You could just use a little quilt, uh, the glue stick that we, yep. that we use mm -hmm. uh, right. on the show. Just like this. Oh, that. No, yeah, you I got it in your I hand. I had it in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. I didn't even see it. I'm yeah. brilliant. <laughs> yeah, um, you are. And Peggy Lawrence from o o Oshawa, uh, Ontario in, in Canada, uh, she buys an inexpensive digital camera. This is just a, a real simple thing that she wanted us to 
know about uh, a, a dedicated, inexpensive digital camera mm -hmm. that she keeps with her uh, sewing supplies that she takes to quilt shows and quilt classes because oh. she always forgets to take her camera and she always needs it, so she just keeps one with all her supplies so she always has a camera to use when she goes off and has things she wants to remember. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. One last tip here from Rosemary Downs of Tyler, Texas. She uses uh, onion bags. She cleans them up, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a great way to clean her rotary cutting mat. Gets little threads in there, and you just scrub those off. See, one for you and one for me. I'll take it. Aren't these great <laughs> tips? We have great tips from all of our viewers, and we want to hear your tips, too. If you have those for us, uh, please go to our website, FonzenPorter.com, and click on the tips section, or... Or you can mail them, and if you mail us the prop, too, we really appreciate that. If you want to use a postal system, you can send your tip to tips, Fonz and Porter, P.O. Box 171, Winterset, Iowa, 50273. And if we use your tip on a future show, you'll get a free one-year subscription to our magazine, Fonz and Porter's Love of Quilting. It's been another great show with you, Mom. Thanks for having me on, and thanks for watching, everybody. Additional quilting ideas from Marianne and Liz are available in Fonz and Porter's Love of Quilting magazine. A one-year subscription contains 60 or more projects, easy to follow step-by-step -step instructions, and our tips, techniques, and shortcuts. In addition to the magazine, you'll get two DVDs containing all 13 shows from the 1700 series and two additional booklets with extra projects, tips, and techniques. The cost is $29.97. To order, call 866-729-9601 or visit our website, FonzandPorter.com. You can visit our website for free quilt tips, so easy quilting lessons, and slideshows of spectacular quilts. Download free quilt patterns, see supply lists for TV projects, join our quilting community, and more. Log on to FonzandPorter.com. Funding for Fonz and Porter's Love of Quilting is provided by... For over 40 years, Babylock has been dedicated to the love of sewing by creating machines for sewing, embroidery, quilting, and serging. Baby Lock for the love of sewing. Koala Studios deliver sewing furniture custom built in America. American Professional Quilting Systems, APQS, offers a full line of hand guided quilting machines made in America's heartland for America's artisans. The Oliso ProZone Smart Iron featuring the Auto Lift, engineered for the professional quilter and sewing enthusiast. Andover Fabrics, makers of a variety of fabrics available at independent quilt shops and fabric stores. Sulky, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, and books. Sulky, express yourself. Omnigrid, providing quilters with specialty rulers and accessories for over 25 years. Quilters Club of America, offering patterns and videos to the passionate quilter.